August 2009, an unimaginable tragedy unfolded on the roads of San Diego. Off-duty Californian Highway Patrolman Mark Saylor, a vehicle inspector, was driving a dealer loaner, a Lexus ES350. Three passengers were with him. Without warning, the Lexus began accelerating. Before long, it had passed the 100 mile an hour mark and was still climbing. Sailor's foot was stamping on the brake, but he couldn't find a way to slow the car down. Desperately ringing 911, he explained the terrifying circumstances. A passenger in the car was heard saying, pray for us. Sadly, all four vehicle occupants would perish when the Lexus launched into an embankment while traveling at least 113 miles an hour. With the 911 call captured and recorded, the incident caused a media firestorm. The story spread through the US and highlighted thousands more unintended acceleration cases in Toyota vehicles. By the middle of the next year, newspapers were claiming up to 89 deaths relating to the unintended acceleration in Toyotas. Toyota owners were unsure and scared. It all culminated about five years later in 2014, with Toyota agreeing to a $1.2 billion fine to avoid prosecution for covering up severe problems with unintended acceleration. This was the largest criminal penalty imposed on a car company in US history. We pay our respects to the Sailor and La Estrella families, along with many of the others injured or killed in potentially avoidable road traffic collisions. This video explores the truth behind Toyota's unintended acceleration, a story that gripped the country from 2009 until 2014. When journalists and news outlets took up the San Diego incident, stories from other Toyota owners began flooding in. Reports of unintended acceleration came thick and fast to NHTSA's offices. Toyota was worried. Toyota drivers reported incidents of their vehicles suddenly accelerating uncontrollably. Panicked, they sometimes couldn't find a way to bring the car to a halt. In some cases, this resulted in a crash. In a few instances, these were fatal. Allegations began to arise that Toyota knew what was going on. Did they? Had they designed an unsafe car? Were they refusing to admit such a problem to avoid paying for an expensive recall? Theories as to what was causing this unintended acceleration began taking root. The most notable claims would try to place the blame on Toyota's electronic throttle control system. What if sensors were failing? What if electromagnetic radiation was impacting the ECUs? What if the brake couldn't overcome the engine? What if pressing the brake was actually making the car speed up? If there really was an issue here, Toyota would be found at fault for any collision, injury, or fatality involving a mention of unintended acceleration. And that's what the general public began to believe. It was fueled by press outlets and soon the entire country was outraged. You'll still find reports on the situation today and many still believe in the factual accuracy of these claims. However, they aren't based in evidence or fact. Despite the tragedies, this is a case of mass hysteria, not faulty electronics. Before we dive in, it's worth taking a moment to understand how the accelerator pedal works in a modern car. An engine runs by mixing fuel and oxygen. The accelerator pedal controls how much air comes in from the atmosphere. Pressing the pedal opens a plate, allowing more oxygen to rush past. The more you push your foot down, the wider the plate opens. When you release the pedal, the plate is designed to sit slightly open so the engine doesn't stall. The pedal also controls how much fuel goes into the engine. In the past, the accelerator pedal, or gas pedal as you might call it, was connected to the throttle plate by a mechanical linkage, a direct physical connection. In 1988, BMW changed everything by releasing drive-by-wire. Instead of a mechanical connection, the pedal was connected to an accelerator pedal position sensor. The car's ECU would take this information and open the electronically controlled throttle body with the equivalent amount. Thus, there's no physical connection between the pedal and the throttle body. It might sound unnerving, but this technology is used in almost every modern car's internal combustion engine. It means less weight, better reliability, fewer adjustments and mechanical problems, better fuel economy, more reactive responses, fewer emissions, better safety features, simplified maintenance, and much more. But it presents a theoretical problem. If a bug tricks the system into thinking something is happening, might this bug override the driver's input? For for example, if a problem with a sensor, the throttle body, or the ECU forced the vehicle into wide open throttle, it could, in theory, account for the unexpected acceleration. And that's exactly what worried Toyota drivers began accusing their vehicle's electronic throttle control system, known as ETCSI, of doing. If a court decided Toyota was liable for a problem like this, they would be in a heap of legal, financial, and ethical trouble. But did reality show this to be the case? In most people's opinions, no. 
Let's go back to 2010. On February 23, 2010, NHTSA and Toyota released a joint statement on the unintended acceleration allegations. It was read before the Committee on Energy and Commerce in the U.S. House of Representatives. The document is very revealing as to what NHTSA in particular knew at the time. In it, NHTSA explains their plans to conduct further tests on the ETCSI system, but details how they have yet to find any serious issue. The Department of Transport, DOT, would lead these tests. The Department of Transport brought in 30 NASA scientists to conduct intensive tests over a 10-month period. The NASA engineers poured over every line of code in the electronic throttle system. They also directly applied high levels of electromagnetic interference into the wiring harnesses to see if anything went wrong. The test vehicles were six Toyota Camrys between the year 2002 and 2007. Each had been reported by their owners for instances of sudden unintended acceleration. The results were released released in February 2011. NASA scientists found no indication of any problems and couldn't even replicate unintended acceleration once. The results were released in February 2011. Their report concluded that the system contained several pre-existing satisfactory fail-safe measures. The electromagnetic radiation test caused engine stalling, limp mode, and even fried one Camry's ECU but never caused unintended acceleration. Their report, however, did include the following sentence. Because proof that the ETCSI caused the reported cases of unintended acceleration does not mean it could not occur. When it comes to computer code, it's impossible to test every possible scenario. These systems are so complex that a thorough test would take millions, if not billions of years. And so there's always room for error. What's more relevant than a potential bug is how effective the system's failsafes are in detecting and overriding it, and this important detail is something that would come up later on. The best scientists in the country then had essentially cleared Toyota's ETCSI. In any realistic scenario, they'd found no way for it to cause the unintended acceleration. And this begs the question, what was? The reality was, as it turned out, much less complicated. Let's return to the tragedy involving Highway Patrol Officer Mark Saylor on the San Diego Road. Despite the media hype, a local investigation by the San Diego Sheriff's Office in conjunction with NHTSA concluded that the accelerator pedal had become stuck underneath the heavy all-weather floor mats. Saylor likely depressed the pedal to accelerate and didn't realize that the mat had shifted. Some sources also state that the mats, supplied for the Lexus ES350 he was driving, were designed for the Lexus RX and were too long to fit in the ES350 correctly. Couple this with the fact that Sailor was driving a loaner car from the dealership and things start to become a little clearer. The previous driver of the Lexus had reported the mat catching the accelerator pedal just three days earlier. The gas pedal getting stuck under the mat came to be known as pedal entrapment. Note that this was the conclusion of an independent investigation, not Toyota's. In the tragic San Diego case of August 2009, pedal entrapment was almost certainly to blame. The fact that the Lexus was a rental brings even more things into play. Driving an unfamiliar car makes you more likely to panic if something goes wrong. The vehicle might respond differently. Your feet might naturally sit in the same positions as they usually do in your own car, and so on. In fact, several cases involving unintended acceleration in Toyotas were in rentals. The issue of the accelerator pedal sticking to the mat was known to Toyota. In August 2007, a fatal Camry crash led to NHTSA conducting an engineering analysis. As a result, Toyota issued a September 2007 recall for all-weather mats and Camrys and Lexus models. The recall involved replacing the all-weather mats with a redesigned version, including a warning that drivers must ensure they're always anchored properly. NHTSA issued a similar warning to anchor floor mats to all drivers of any car, but especially Toyota consumers. Following a non-fatal crash caused by pedal entrapment, NHTSA advised Toyota to re-notify customers of the recall in January 2009. The next high-profile incident came several months later, the Sailor crash in San Diego. Following this tragedy, NHTSA investigations found that a certain Toyota pedal design was more likely to lead to pedal entrapment than the others. As a result, Toyota issued another recall affecting 3.8 million cars. This was dated October 5, 2009 and involved changing or reshaping the pedals. NHTSA also pressured Toyota to install its brake override system developed for newer cars in these recalled models. Toyota complied. In January 2010, Toyota issued another recall for an additional 1.1 million cars after further NHTSA investigations into pedal entrapment. 
Up until February 2010, NHTSA was only aware of five deaths related to pedal entrapment, four of which were Mark Saylor and his three passengers. Pedal entrapment wasn't the only cause of unintended acceleration found by NHTSA. The government body opened an investigation in November 2009 after receiving several reports of incidents. However, before they could reach a formal conclusion, Toyota notified NHTSA of a problem it had identified. The affected pedals were manufactured in Elkhart, Indiana by CTS Corporation. A design flaw meant that these pedals were sometimes hard to push or didn't immediately return to the top resting position, if at all. Toyota's recall on January 21, 2010 affected 2.3 million vehicles, although many of these were also included in the pedal entrapment recalls. Toyota redesigned the pedals for new cars and altered the existing pedals in the meantime. As of February 2010, NHTSA wasn't aware of any fatalities involving the sticky pedals. Despite the awful circumstances, these were relatively low numbers. So how could a May 2010 news report based on an NHTSA statement attribute 6,200 complaints, 89 deaths, and 57 injuries to Toyota's reported unintended acceleration problem? Join us in part two to find out. Thanks for watching part one of our deep dive into Toyota's unintended acceleration. If you enjoyed this content, please leave us a like and subscribe for more like this. Stay tuned for part two next week.